Hi, this is Brother Esquire, and I would like to welcome you to my show, Your Moment for Biblical Truth. Um, on the last show, we were talking about the spirits of Sodom, Balaam, and Gomorrah in the church. On the last show, at the end of it, I was abruptly cut off due to time was strange. I know it kind of seems like I didn't get cut off, but I actually did. Um, so we're going to finish that series or that message, and this is going to be entitled Part 2. And for reference purposes, we're going to start back about three or four minutes from the last taping so that we can build up and keep going. Now, before I start, I want everyone to know I love God. I love Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit. So I speak passionate about them when I speak about them. I feel there are a lot of people who speak about them, but they don't have the passion or a lot of people who have the passion but won't speak. So I have the passion and I speak. And so I come off as a little rough and I apologize for that. I'm not trying to be rough. I'm just trying to be passionate. Also, I am not trying to merge New Testament teaching with Old Testament teaching. I am simply using the Old Testament as what it was intended for. It is a schoolmaster. We learn from the Old Testament the mind of God and how God thought or reacted to sins that they committed then. And being that there is nothing new under the sun, those sins they committed then, we still commit them now. And God's mind is still the same way towards those sins. Especially if you do not have Jesus Christ and his blood and his finished works applied to you in your life by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if you're not pleasing God, you are on his bad side, so to say. So, with that being said, we're just going to start with the message. And today's message is a continuation of the last message, the spirits of Sodom, Balaam, and Gomorrah in the church. Now, do not be fooled. Some of God's children are past homosexuals. However, None of God's children are current homosexuals. How is this true? Once a person gives their heart to God, they become a new person in Jesus Christ. But they may still have homosexual desires. They may even commit the homosexual act again. However, this does not mean that you are not a new, a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are. Always believe you are. And don't let nobody or nothing you do tell you you are not because you are. <clears throat> Stay in the Bible to fill your mind with the words of God to help fight the homosexual thoughts because that's where Satan attacks us in the mind. We say we have given up our lives and Satan says I am not worthy. He comes to you in the first person. I mean my mind. He's arrogant. So fight those thoughts and lean not on your own understanding. Stay in prayer. And this is very important. You must stay in prayer. It keeps you close to God. It keeps God's activational power or God's power activated in your life. Stay in prayer to stay strong and held up in him to fight the homosexual temptations by the Holy Spirit. Let those around you know about your new spiritual walk that you on your own will have chosen and that you will no longer participate in the act of homosexuality. Those that accept you, regardless of their sexual identification, you can continue to be friends with them. There is nothing wrong with this. You are against the sin that has overcome them, but not the person themselves. Remember, you were once what they are now. And Christ long suffered for you, so he is long suffering for them. Be a vessel. Preach the word. Let them know the truth. Let them know God loves them. Let them know the same has happened for you has happened for them. Help them to realize the truth. The love of God, the blood of Jesus and the forgiveness of the cross. Talk to them about your faith. But don't run them down with your faith. Be gentle. As Christ was gentle. 
Those that don't accept you, regardless of their spiritual identification, or those that try to talk you out of your newfound faith, remove yourself from them. Remove yourself from them before they make you weak and you give up your newfound faith in God. God will help you by removing some of them himself from bothering you. Do not judge them. Because if anyone knows what they're going through in their head, you do. For those that can, for those that you cannot get away from for whatever reason, God will give you the grace to deal with them and to handle the temptation they bring. Now, as one who has chosen to give up your homosexual ways, you may have the thoughts, desires, and even commit the homosexual act itself. However, the more of the word of God you learn to fight it with, you will find that the more your love for God and Jesus Christ will grow. And the fewer and far between will be the thoughts you have and the acts you commit. Until one day you'll look up and so much time has passed from the last time you thought about it or did it. Surprise! You're no longer homosexual. Keep at it. The word of God can change your life immediately and slowly over time. But it will change you. If you say you believe but don't give it up, then you're telling God that you love him based on the condition that he accepts you as a homosexual. And God has a response to this. God's response is, I do love you unconditionally, but I hate homosexuality because it is abomination. Therefore, I will destroy it myself. It only exists because of the people that commit it and will not stop. So the only way for me to get rid of it is to get rid of the people that commit it and will not stop. If you commit it and will not stop, then I have to get rid of you. This does not mean that I don't love you any less than anyone else. It means you don't love me enough to truly repent from your sin of homosexuality. Your love for God is in question. Not God's love for you. Remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If your love for God in Christ is true, then you will stop. It's called repentance. Now, understand, there is no homosexual that is completely lost to God. No one is. You may say, well, I was born this way and I've had these feelings since as long as I can remember. That's okay. Because God said through Jesus the Christ, his son, one must be born again. And that newness of being born again is of the spirit. Change the way you think. And the only way you can change the way you think is to find something to fight those thoughts with. The Bible is the mind of God. Get in it. Learn it. Read it. Fill your mind with the word of God so that when the evil thoughts come, you can have a holy thought to fight it with. And I promise you, those evil thoughts will flee. Satan can't stand to be around holiness. He hates it. With that being said, if you are a homosexual or a confused person, and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and walk a new life and try this for yourself and enter into the glorious kingdom, I invite you. We, the church, we invite you. So please bow your head and pray with me. Lord God, I am a sinner. I have sinned exceedingly and greatly. I have went against your law. But today, Father, 
Now, I say I want to come home. I want to give up my sinful ways. I want to learn to please you. So, Lord Jesus, my new king, the only begotten of the Father, I ask you to come to me. Come inside of me. Fill me with your word. Fill me with your spirit. And wash me clean with your holy blood. Make me worthy and righteous. Stand by me. Lift me up. And girdle my mind. Help me in my new walk. Strengthen me. Lord God, I bow my head and I kneel to my knees at your throne. Unworthy, but still holding your son by his hand. And I say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me. I come home. I am here. Forgive me. Lord Jesus, in your name, by your blood, I pray. Amen. And amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer with me, I believe you are now my brother and my sister in Christ. You are a new creation. You have now entered into a holy kingdom. A kingdom that is forever. A kingdom whose king is eternal. And a kingdom who has a real God. Stay strong. Stay in prayer. And may God bless you. Until I see you again, I would like you to know I love you. And I would ask you to keep out, to keep a lookout for my latest shows. Subscribe and follow me and stand by me, pray for me, and help me as I continue my walk with God. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, have a great day.